hear me? Most of you don't know me. Steve Elkin, I'm the Academy of Living Care Board. It's been a pleasure to be here for the last four and a half years um, to help me describe it. Can you hear me now? Okay. My name is Steve Elders. I'm the town manager. Um, I came in and I'm getting off the ground. Uh, and it's, uh, it's an amazing project. There's a lot of support in the community. Um, I thank you all for coming. Um, I'm going to let the chairman of the board speak, but this is a great turnout. And I thank you all. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for coming down here. This is an exciting time for Broward. It's one of the biggest nights I know of in Broward that's gone on for decades and decades. This is a major milestone that we're stepping forward here to bring this forward. And a little bit of history is prime canning had been an ongoing concern for many years here. It's a close from 2008. Went into bankruptcy, the property was abandoned, and it sat abandoned for several years. And then in 2014, I believe, is uh, you know, there was a group got together in town, the downtown vision committee, and they started you know talking about what could go on and what we could do to improve Berwick. And we approached the funded Jupiter who held the title for the property and entered into a public and private partnership with them. The town took over the property. We applied for federal grants. We got three rounds of grants. It totaled over two million, I think it was $2.2 million to clean up the property. And, um, and it's still ongoing. And the owner, Mark Cahaya, of Funded Jupiter, you no, know, had, had plans to develop it, but things weren't happening. So earlier this year, is Steve Elder, the town manager, was talking about this wonderful project going on in Gorham. He saw it all the time, this area was something in the Gorham area. He said, every time I go by, more exciting, more things are going on. And so we said, invite him down. And, um, and uh, what, what could hurt? So we contacted Great Falls Construction, is John and Cindy Smack, and uh, they, Steve obviously piqued their interest, and uh, they came down, they toured the property, they saw potential here, and they entered into agreement this last week, they purchased the property, they have a lot of plans of what's going on, what can go on here, and so with that, I'd like to introduce John and Cindy Smith and their daughter Julie, and and they'll take it from here because they're the ones doing this all. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, actually, we're going to do just a couple of quick introductions, and then Marcos is going to sort of take it from there. So, because uh, we really want to get to the point of the point of tonight is that there's really a listening session. So, my name is John Smith. Um, started Great Falls Construction in 1988, and have been doing construction and development since then. Uh, we're out of Gorm, and we're uh, actually, uh, as you just heard, he did write us a letter a while back, and we came down and met with. Um, some people here in town and heard about the project. One thing led to another. I think it took close to a year as we contemplated and looked at things and sort of tried to understand what was what had been happening down here and and what the opportunity was. So we're now excited really to be one spoke in the wheel of progress here. I know that this has been a lot of effort that's going on. Very evident when you read all of the all the reports and the Envision Borough report and on and on and on. There's just so much effort that's gone on. So we're really excited to be um, at this milestone. And the, the property has transferred. We, we purchased it last week and are getting going. We're going to be looking to get civil engineers on board fairly quickly and get going. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to Cindy for introduction. So as you know, I'm Cindy Smith. I'm Vice President of Great Falls Construction. 
And um, I've been in the business, well, I always say it's the day that I got married, which is in June of 89. But um, I just wanted to say that we do have a suggestion box that I'm going to put near the property for people at any time to put suggestions in. I would love you to encourage some of the younger people in town as well, because we want all of you to be heard. And we want their, you know, their ideas as well as anyone else's. So, and here's our daughter, Julie. Hi, everyone. I'm Julie. There are a lot of you, so I'm really nervous. <laughs> Um, and I work in business development at Great Falls Construction, uh, and I will be, you have my email address, all of you, it should have been on your chair. So um, I'll be collecting uh, any, any ideas you have, uh, interests, questions, anything uh, you'd like to share with us, feel free to email me, call me at the office, the phone number's on there as well. So we want to keep the conversation going, and we're looking forward, like they both said, to uh, a really exciting project um, with all of your participation. So thanks for coming. So with that, uh, you can see the agenda tonight. I'm going to introduce Marcos Miller here. He's going to be um, helping us. So that we'll be sitting up front just sort of listening and taking notes, and then there'll be a portion of the, of the evening where we can respond to questions and all that. So, but um, we'll move forward with Marcos. Great. Thank you, John. And um, it's great to have a, such a strong turnout. Uh, my name is Marcos Miller. I'm a meeting facilitator, and I'm based up in Portland. And um, the Great Falls asked me to help out with organizing this meeting and being sure that your um, comments are captured faithfully. Um, it's a great story, um, the, the mill and the, the vision that, that you guys, the community, have put together. And that excited me a lot about this project, but also um, the Smith family's real interest in hearing your input also. Um, they mentioned the suggestion box that's back there. There's um, cards and paper, so you can, anytime tonight, put some comments in there if you're not comfortable sharing them here. Also use those cards, and if you're not comfortable coming up to the podium to speak, if you hold those cards up, um, Julie or I can run around and get those for you and be sure that those comments are shared and collected. Um, we are asking that people use the podium as if at all possible. If you're not able to, raise your hand and we'll, we can bring you a microphone. This is being recorded to you on public access, um, just so you know, and that's one reason why we really need to use the microphone and the podium. At that point, at this point, I'm going to switch over to the other mic, so this mic is here for you. Okay, thanks. So, as John mentioned, um, we're really here to listen, so we're going to take a good part of the, the evening um, to get your comments. From the podium. My job is to write it down, make sure I'm clearly capturing your comments. The second half of the forum is a chance for these guys to respond a little bit, um, maybe answer some of the questions that have popped up, and to get a little more of a dialogue going between you. But first and foremost, we want to hear from you. We want your comments, um, hopes for the site, concerns, whatever you have to share. My job is to capture that. Um, a few housekeeping issues before we take care of things. I imagine everyone knows that the restrooms are downstairs and off to the left. Um, there's some snacks as well um, and some water provided by Great Falls, so help yourself to that. Additionally, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that you guys are going to be a res respectful community and so let people comment. And if you want to follow up on someone else's comment, that's fine. We just ask that you do it from the podium. Um, and I will capture whatever comments you have. We really want to foster a, a um, respectful dialogue in which everybody's voice is heard, too. Um, and we might be able to answer all the questions tonight if there are questions, but I know that the Smiths are, are really dedicated to following up, so if all the questions can't be answered tonight, we're going to capture those, and if you can write, maybe if, if you write something on a card, um, contact information, I know that the Smiths will be able to reach out to you to answer that question individually, and probably will we'll do their best to address that in any communications with the community and the, the town as well. Are there any questions before we get started? Okay, great. Um, so first, we're just going to listen. So I'm just going to ask folks to come up to the podium and. Um, 
make your comments, your questions, I'll capture them. Don't be shy, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first question on my mind is, is your firm going to tear down all the old buildings and start from scratch? Could you repeat the question to the mic? <laughs> my question is whether your company has already intent to tear down all of the existing structures and start from scratch. Okay, let me, it will also help me if you do use the podium, that way I can capture, I can write things down. So, is that good, sir? Okay. The podium, please. Thank you. I'm no stranger to the mic. I'm a DJ, so. <laughs> I'm new to the area fairly. I've been in Burke for about three years. Uh, so if you guys don't recognize me. Hi, I'm Pete. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, I have children that are in the sports for uh, the rec program, uh, soccer, basketball, and we really need a rec center. We need a gym, we need a center for the youth to meet, families to meet, so we can do family activities, for our seniors to meet so they can do activities. We do need a full basketball gym, if not two, if that's possible. We have a lot of sports, a lot of basketball, so if we can get a rec center going, that would be amazing. Thank you. This is from? From Ruth Blue. Blue. The people of Berwick would really like a vibrant downtown, a downtown that sustains itself. In part, what that means is a place where businesses can thrive. In order to thrive, they must have people and visitors. To attract these visitors, that means all of us, friends, families, neighbors, there need be more than just shops. There must be that which draws those visitors to the downtown. Pocket parks of many different types would would crawl many, that they could become a meeting place and a destination, and by chance those visiting will probably drop into a shop. Possibilities for pocket parks, area with picnic tables and a hot dog wagon, a horseshoe court, a drawn hopscotch diagram, a small basketball court, climb on a sculpture garden, swings and seesaws, labeled native plant garden, hardscaped area to sit and have food trucks or contests among local restaurants, an outdoor wine bar, an ice cream stand, <laughs> an exercise court does not have to confine to the usual exercise areas, could be throughout the downtown area, push-ups, pull-ups, knee bends, etc. All these things should be sprinkled throughout the entire downtown area so as to bring customers to every business. Ruth, can I just keep this as documentation and we'll put up here pocket parts? Um, the group that bought that place before and uh, made a deal with the town, uh, so the town paid for the free, or for the state to clean it, and it got cleaned, and then nothing has happened. The people that have had it for a long time have done nothing of those. Um, and you can't find anything about the town. They don't let you know. They don't tell you any information of this what's going on until it's happened. And we signed the meeting out a few days ago. We have no idea what was going on. Uh, nothing is told to the people that live here. Uh, so, you know, I'm just wondering what's going on now because we didn't have any idea. The people that bought it 
got a back after it was cleaned, and nothing has happened. So we'd like to know what's happening now. Thank you. Okay, another question. I don't know what happened to the last group that wanted to do over fine tanning. What guarantees can you give the town that this won't happen again? I'd like to see the uh, plan include a guaranteed room or two for a historical society because it's constantly being ignored as, as an ideal addition to the town. It's not being ignored by the people who want it, but wouldn't it be great if there's a way to guarantee that space there instead of waiting for something to open up in town, which has become a, a really difficult issue. There's just not many business doors available for it. And uh, a couple other things. I hope that, yeah. First, could you repeat the very first part of your comment so I can capture that? I did, I did. Oh, can you just repeat the first part of your comment? You didn't catch it. Oh, okay. About the historical society. I very much wish that there was a way to guarantee that whatever the structures are, there will be, um, let, me, let me amend that three or four rooms, however small, for a genuine historical society. That to me is terribly important and there just is not enough available real estate and doors and buildings available to just say, let's go do that. People have tried and tried and tried, but I can't imagine why we can't make it happen. Okay. I, I live on Jordan Street, and I have a question. Um, how much of the property of the former prime tan do the Smiths own? Um, I know the, the, the uh, general property, but what about the small green metal building at the end of Jordan Street and the parking lot across the street on Wilson Street and any other ancillary properties? I'm just wondering the extent of the ownership. Great, thank you. I'm going to try and mark the questions and things to the fall come back through. Um, we can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm going to try and mark all the questions in pink so that we can easily identify them um, when the Smiths come up to, to respond as well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rebecca. And I want to know um, you guys can work with a lot of local businesses. We have a lot of um, small entrepreneurs here in Berwick, we're a small town. We do a lot of our um, winter markets here with a lot of our local businesses, and I'd like to see us trying to create a space for them to have an area or, you know, work with smaller local places. So I'd like to know what your plans are for that. Thank you. Donald Young, a uh, former member of Envision Berwick. I was Shanghai into it by uh, Paul Bovier and his, uh, his buddy, Frank Underwood. Served there for a couple of years and they're doing a lot of good work. That grew out of the 300th anniversary of the town. So my comments are going to be mostly for the Smiths, I think, to bring them up to speed. They may know a lot of this history, but after the town's 300th anniversary, and this lot has been sitting festering over here for five years, people wanted to get something going. And that envisioned good committee did a lot of work trying to get the ball rolling. They were up against it with the fund of Jupiter because they're not developers, they're mining people, and all they want is money. And 
they took it on the chin when crime went belly up, and they're not interested in the good of the town. They're interested in getting their money back. I hope you didn't pay them too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a member of the Borough Historical Society, and the Borough Historical Society is looking for homes. It has been. And it's the ninth oldest town in the state of Maine, and a, an offshoot of the oldest permanent settlement in Maine, which was Kittery, you would think, well, it has a long history, and you'd think they have a home by now, but they don't. If there's a way to include that uh, interest in your ideas, that would be great. As far as the recreation aspects go, I'm not sure that the people here have a very long memory, but when the former uh, Angels of Peace of the Catholic Church here in town was purchased by House of Hope, uh, they renovated that as a food kitchen and a kind of a community center. And part of the plan that they proposed at the time includes a lot of recreational activities, basketball court. Uh, so that is something that, as far as I know, we have planned. I do want to bring up, uh, I think we were, people in town were surprised when they did get the grant, and remember, that grant was federal money. It came out of everybody's pocket. That was by the EPA. So you can thank the federal government for bailing out a bad situation. They cleaned up that place, and a lot of people thought there was, that all the buildings were going to be demolished. And some people were disappointed because they thought that there should be a lot of open space there. I do have, my question, I guess when I finally get down to it is, there is a grass over area I learned across from Campbell Savings Bank. And my understanding is that that was going to be an open space and at one point, we heard that Fund of Jupiter was, it wasn't going to belong to the town, but Fund of Jupiter retained that. So uh, there was discussion at one point that that would be open space. Now it looks like maybe it's up for development, but I don't know. So your question, sir, is what's the plan for open space? Well, what is the plan for that grass over area? Because I think we were originally what to believe that it would be kept open. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I didn't talk too much. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Beth O'Connor. I'm a little bit involved in this town. Have been for about 20 years. The people are absolutely fantastic. And so I have uh, quite a few concerns. I'm really glad that somebody stepped up to the plate. They've bought this property. Congratulations. I know you're going to do a great job, or I sure hope you're going to. Um, but so we have something in the state of Maine called the Pine Tree Development Zone. And in that Pine Tree Development Zone, what it does is offer new businesses that will be probably purchasing rental space from you. And it gives them um, different types of tax credits and breaks so that they can step up to the plate and be able to hit a home run because as you know this is a border town and sometimes it's really difficult to compete with New Hampshire and so I'd like to know if you are going to be taking advantage or using that pine tree development zone so that we can ensure the businesses that do come in here and I do want business to come in here because we do need that tax revenue um, if you'll be using that and taking advantage of it to help these new businesses um, be successful. Sorry, am I speaking too fast? 
And then the other thing that I was actually really interested in is um, we have a pretty full school system, and a lot of times when you put in a lot of larger developments with a lot of housing in it, sometimes that can overburden the school system and the tax revenues that we may take in would be depreciated by the um, individuals using that particular school system. So I don't know what type of housing you plan on putting in, but I do know that you do need some housing to be a vibrant downtown. And the other question that I have is Maine is an aging state and we have in the past 10 years seen one of our local nursing homes close or place where we could house our elderly and it was really difficult. A lot of those people went to places far away and we are having a continuous crisis and I wanna know if any part of this will be age friendly um, or older age friendly, especially because I'm getting up here. Um, so, and I think that's probably about it because other people probably have questions and I could go on all night. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alex Colbert. I'm a lifetime borough president for Brooks Park. And I want to say thank you very much for being here. Thank you for being here. We're really happy. Um, one of my concerns and thoughts for the downtown is trying to, you have a huge parcel there to deal with, and we have a few smaller outskirts of parcels in town that are currently like the existing centers, like right in front of the town hall here in Sullivan Square. And then the businesses right along, um, you know, on the north side there, northeast side of Sullivan Square. That's kind of like the town center at the moment. And we do have businesses going up School Street also, up to Cumberland Farms. And we also have the new park, which the town just worked hard to get over um, below Moulton Street. And I just hope that when you're considering the large-scale development package that you put together, that it doesn't become exclusively self-centered looking inward at the package but that it incorporates the outer line pieces that are valuable to the town that have been there for a long time and hopefully it all gets incorporated into kind of a natural package not like you have a little box here and then a box in the middle of the development and then you know come up farms is by itself up the road it would be really nice if somehow the layout makes it all work together as one unit and i think that will make um better use of the peripheral properties like the park there and getting to the library and things like that much more friendly and kind of just doesn't become like a little self-centered you know standalone package that incorporates the the bigger picture of the town and even stuff the, the, the part of stuff that you guys are not um owners of so i think that would be really valuable for the big picture of downtown i hope that gets considered Grab it. Um, my name is Edward Lavasser. I'm a downtown resident of about four years now. Don't live on the Berwick side, I live on the Summersworth side. However, I've seen this project uh, take shape over the past three, four years, got involved as a Summersworth delegation to Envision Berwick. Uh, I think it's important to sort of build off of uh, what the gentleman before me was just saying at, at having a comprehensive look at our downtown as it exists from Summersworth to Berwick really ensure that that they're not competing resources or amenities. I think we're too tight-knit of a community to, to try to have competing resources. Uh, one of the amenities that I think that we really do need downtown is a, is a good market, good place to buy some fresh cuts of meat, some good veggies, uh, possibly a co-op. Um, building off of some previous comments as well, I think there's a huge opportunity to have a business incubator space I think that if that's something that could be explored, I think that would uh, be a great benefit to our downtown. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be coming forward. Uh, again, thank you again for uh, purchasing property. Well, 
it's been a long time coming. I know there's a lot of people working hard for all this and so it's, a, it's great to be up here and actually see this happen. Um, first and foremost, I have to say that I like this, I like this format and I think it's important that you realize that this town really, as I heard earlier, wants transparency. So as you go forward, communication is going to be key for both sides. People have to hear what they do like, they have to hear what they don't like, and you have to be very open-minded to receiving that information. On a side note, uh, in terms of envisioning what we'd like to see downtown, myself personally, if you drive downtown, um, Kenny Monk, Div Main Street, beautiful Main Street, so something along those lines. Kenny Monk is a reference in terms of uh, what something could look like for your main, main street to include the property possibly. Uh, they do have a structure that's basically open air, which allows for a common market, uh, ice skating rink in the winter months and things of that nature. Something like that actually would, would involve a lot of community activities on a variety of scale. Uh, uh, and then, and speaking for my wife, one thing she does want is an Italian bakery. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> About the restaurant scene in the town of Berwick, I've been going to restaurants in the morning for decades, and uh, I just want to point out that it seems to me one of the things that we would benefit most from in the area where the tannery was is a restaurant that has breakfast and lunch and dinner so that we don't have to piecemeal our, our dining experiences so often. Um, does anyone here remember the Colonial Restaurant, which is where Cumbies is now? It was wildly popular. It was filled every day. We moved here in 1974 and everyone loved it and it was a true community center. And the hours were good for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We need something like that. Uh, then we have uh, Mayo's, and which is, they do a wonderful job, so I'm not here to criticize Mayo's except in one way. They close before lunch, and they have no Wi-Fi, which means that a lot of Berwick people who would like to be able to go to a restaurant and have a true breakfast with Wi-Fi, and that's not just people like writers like myself, it's by people who do all sorts of business by Wi-Fi. I have told Mayos in all, uh, with all good intentions, in a friendly way, you're losing business without Wi-Fi because you're right along the road where all the cars go and business people need to use Wi-Fi. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Don't be shy. Thank you, sir. Kevin Gray, and I said, my question is if uh, your organization is going to work with companies like Maine and Company to look to possibly bring some larger employers to in a site like yours. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Um, first, I want to say hi to all our friends who are watching on BCTV. Uh, I think most of the town is actually home watching this, so it's worth mentioning. Hi. Um, I actually don't have a, a, a wish list of what uh, what I'm envisioning for this space. I'm sure lots and lots of people have lots and lots of ideas. I'm excited to hear all of them. I just wanted to say we moved here several years ago, and after watching that spot sit and nothing happen and hearing lots of people be very frustrated about this property where you know clearly nothing was moving forward it's so nice to have some movement and i also feel really good that you you folks are local that you're you know from maine and that that that, that means a lot to have uh, an investment made in our town by somebody by a company that is you know part of our state and has an interest in, in seeing Berwick 
become what we hope it can be. So we're grateful for that. Thank you. When we first moved here 42 years ago, there was a little more business here. And the post office was here. And uh, now there's nothing in town um, except, you know, Ron Channing was here. That, that was the biggest employer. And I worked there for 12 years. Um, but it was the only business here. Right now, there's nothing except, you know, a sub shop and a Cumberland Farms, but there's not really, there's not a restaurant, uh, there is an insurance agency, and uh, right now I think there's a sub shop and something else in what was the post office that comes and goes, but there's not anything that's been staying here. We need a vibrant downtown, and it doesn't have to be South Berwick has a vibrant downtown, and people come there and shop and uh, visit. We don't have anything except a sub shop. <laughs> Thank you. Vibrant downtown, bring back the businesses. Other comments or questions? I've been waiting to see what other questions got asked because uh, I, a lot of people ask me questions that I haven't been able to answer. Um, one of the biggest ones is timeline. Is when you expect to start? Is we going to see equipment out there tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, and uh, is, uh, is it going to be a phased project? You know, are we looking at this over you know a five-year project, a ten-year project? You know, that time, type of timeline. Um, the other thing also is a lot of people are interested to know if you're going to be incorporating renewable energy. Is the site itself is perfectly suited for uh, solar power. Is uh, the orientation is you know full sun from the south. Is uh, you know they had been rendering from uh, before showing some solar panels on buildings and things. So you know people are interested in, in, in utilizing that if you can. Um, and, the other part of renewable energy that you know, is a possibility that's been looked at a little bit is that there is availability of drawing river water onto the site through a uh, dedicated pipeline. And uh, there was some uh, discussion about whether that could be used for geothermal power. So those are some of the questions that people have been asking me that you know, I've passed on to you. Let me see if there's other questions first before I come back to questions from people that have already spoken. So if you haven't spoken yet, you've got a question, or maybe you wrote something down on a card that you want to pass up, it's a great time to come forward or raise your hand. Your hand. Are you planning on using local contractors for any of the construction phases? Anyone else? mid-80s, I guess, um, around that time frame, but uh, uh, I had some property just over the fence from you guys, from where Prime is now, so I had a quick picture of it for a long time. My personal opinion is I just like to bulldoze it down and get some light manufacturing in there or some, some, some place where the local people can work with a livable wage and uh, uh, help with the tax base here in town. I know several people from have already mentioned about the taxes and uh, put some type of uh, industry in there. So I would uh, I would encourage you to take a look at that and see what you can do about putting some people to work locally, livable wage, and uh, help with the tax base here in town. So that's my thoughts. So thanks very much. Thanks for being here.
any other questions or comments before Will Smith um, responds to some of your questions? And of course, we can, the dialogue will continue afterwards. Don't be shy. John and Cindy, do you guys want to run? John, I know you have notes, but um, I've highlighted in pink the questions too, if you need to reference any of these. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I might, might need a little help going through those. Um, I think probably what I ought to do, thanks again for bringing up all of that information, lots of process. Um, a lot of that I certainly can sort of bullet point down through, so why don't I try and do that quickly, and then um, I'm sure Cindy or Julie will, will um, cue me if I've missed something. And then, uh, if there's any other follow-up questions, we can go from there. So, the, uh, let's see, is that the first one there? The, um, I guess, actually, the first, first one question is, will it be torn down? Torn down or start from scratch. Uh, so, I, I guess this, this might come up quite a bit tonight, but one of the things that we worked really hard at doing was not developing strong opinions on what's happening there just yet because we really wanted to come in with an open mind. We have, you know, we're in the development business, we've done this, so we certainly have thoughts and ideas, um, but we really haven't processed things enough to know if the existing building is coming down, it's our understanding that what's there, and we've looked at them, they're, they're structurally sound. Um, I can tell you that we did look at some of the renderings and we would do things a little differently on the buildings, but, um, so I, the answer to that is I'm not sure at this point. We, we need to process things and, uh, and really do, do the engineering on the site, understand what's there and whether it fits in well with a master plan or not. Uh, let's see, the other one was, um, oh, rec center, gym, basketball, sports, and then I couldn't keep up with the notes on that, but I think that's what, um, Pete, Pete the DJ was asking, right? Yeah. Uh, senior Center. So um, we're, we're capturing this information. Um, I don't know. Generally, those things take a lot of square footage, so I'm not sure. But we definitely have it written down as a note, and we'll definitely be processing that uh, as we move forward. So thank you for the comment on that. The, uh, so a roof, a vibrant downtown, more shops, pocket parks, horseshoe park, Again, I, mean, I couldn't keep up with writing the notes, but um, those are good suggestions, good comments, and we will um, we'll definitely be taking those under advisement as we put things together. The the idea of, of a pocket park, um, green space, remembrance park, things like that are, are definitely things that are in our wheelhouse, and we would want to try and incorporate into the development somehow for sure. So those will be will be. Um, process notes as we move forward with design. The, okay, so the next one, um, so town, yeah, the group before, town paid for a cleanup, nothing happened, um, don't, not, not letting anybody know, just found out the meeting a few days ago, um, nothing's been told to people who live here, so what's happening? So, uh, in a nutshell, we, um, you know, our involvement has been ongoing for close to a year. I think I, I hear February, I think, might be the official date that we sort of started communicating. Uh, we, were, we were dealing with a prior owner. We were also trying to understand the project and all that. So there were a lot of balls in the air um, around that. I can tell you that, you know, moving forward, and, and so when we finally closed, and it was really, um, honestly, this, this came together. Um, I think we officially signed a personal sale agreement, and I don't think a week passed before we closed on it. So it was, I mean, that's how long it took to kind of get things together. Uh, no, you know, that's just the way it is. That's just kind of the way it happened. So um, did, we couldn't announce anything, couldn't say anything. It didn't make any sense to because we really didn't know until last minute. Um, 
However, as soon as we closed, we really wanted to get the word out and have our first listening session. Our second one is scheduled for December 5th. And our goal is to really, as I said, we hadn't done a lot of work on thinking about that. We're putting pencil to paper on the site um, because we didn't want to really lay our ideas on there and have to backtrack from those without understanding what the community wanted. We did read what the community wanted in the Envision Borough report. We also, we think that it's in total alignment with sort of how we, um, you know, how we develop and, and how we feel communities go. We, we live in a small town as well, although it's grown significantly since, since uh, Cindy and I were kids there. But it's, um, so we understand that. I think there's a lot of similarities. However, every town has its own identity. And so, and so we really wanted to understand that try and learn more about that before we move forward. So we can, we will be communicating as best we can as we move forward on that. So what guarantees can we give the town and that it won't happen again? To be honest, none. Can't give any guarantees it won't happen again. What I can guarantee you is that we're gonna work really hard. We're committed, we bought this property. Um, we're, we're heavily financially invested. Um, I don't think we, we paid too much, but uh, I would have loved to have paid less. So <laughs> that's, that's kind of where we're at. So that in and of itself motivates us to get moving on this project. Um, but I won't make any guarantees, except as to say, we're going to guarantee that we're going to work hard to try and pull the project together and really make it happen. And we do have a track record of that, which we can speak to if anyone would like to hear that. The, uh, so, a uh, guarantee for the historical society. Um, I did see that note in the Envisioning Berwick report, and I, I heard it brought up twice tonight. So, uh, it's, it's noted, and we will see what we can do with that, how we can um, pull that together. Again, I, no guarantees on it, but it's definitely noted, and um, we'll see what we can do with that. How much do we own? Uh, so what we what we purchased is the primary site of 728 acres, I believe. Then there's a parking lot across the street that, that was uh, part of the purchase, and then there's a duplex that we bought as part of the purchase. The blue sort building and the and the uh, land across the street from that is retained by Mark the prior, or we did not purchase that. I think he had planned for that, but I'm not. Not really can speak to that. Uh, the local businesses, uh, winter markets, etc. So we do feel. I mean, in, in general, you know, we've been thinking sort of at the top of the funnel when we around this project, uh, consciously being aware of not getting too deep into the weeds on it. But at that level, business is really what what drives a village. Um, it, it also requires residential component, which I know is a question further down I'll get to. So um, definitely duly noted the local businesses and winter markets and opportunities for that to continue. So uh, Dawn, I think boiling it down, your question came to the grass over area across from Cayman Savings Bank open space. So I, we were made aware that that was um, uh, talked about as open space initially. I don't think there's any uh, any sort of commitments in place on that. And I would say that, again, we're at the top of the funnel, so our design uh, is going to come together and it will include open space. Can't guarantee it's going to be right there, but it will include it. And uh, we literally have not looked at the plan, all of our efforts to date, moving up to purchase this property, have been dealing with the environmental risks and hazards, looking at what's going on there, and just understanding whether there is an opportunity um, to not, you know, to, to, to acquire a parcel that we really can do something good with. That's been the focus of it. The fun part, which is really, this is the beginning of the fun part right here, we've deprived ourselves of to date, and we're excited to get moving forward on it. So. Um, in short, can't guarantee that it will be there, but there will be open space and community areas in the in the development. Pine Tree Development Zone, Beth, you asked about that. 
and um, we're we're going to be involved to the best of our abilities. I don't have a lot of experience with the Pine Tree Development Zone, but we're absolutely we have we have business tenants now, and we work with them significantly to um, grow their to open their businesses, to grow them, to expand as needed. So if there are um, yeah, if this is in that zone and eligible, I'd love to learn more about that and see how we can um, bolt that onto the equation and make it be a benefit for businesses that want to move in. Um, and then, so the full school system, housing overburden to the system, uh, those are comments that we're pretty familiar with. As I said, we're from Gorham. Same, the same thing is going on there. Um, I'd like to draw a quick analogy to a project that we're building in Gorham, which is right in the middle of the village. It's a mixed-use facility. There are 70, there will be 70 people living in that building, and then there are six businesses that are in that building. Um, but the, the residential component right in the middle of the village is not, is by design, uh, is not ideally suited for families, but it's not that families aren't welcome there, it's just that they're built smaller and, and more suitable for um, younger adults and or you know, the cross-section that we have there, we, it's not age-restricted, uh, it's fully, we have ADA accessible units in there, it's fully accessible, and we our ages range from 5 to 85. We have one family moved in with two children. Um, I don't know what, you know, when we look at the residential component, um, we will kind of uh, try and shape it up to what we think would make sense, and we will be, uh, you know, having um, opportunities for comments around that as we move forward. But I think by default, these sort of urban center, inner village living opportunities um, are not the place that young families with multiple children typically move to. There are some, certainly. Um, I can't imagine that we would want to restrict that. I think that we, you know, what we're thinking about is more um, market rate uh, opportunities for in a mixed use scenario. So that's kind of what we're thinking there. And um, the, the the other point, actually, that we've noticed in our in our most recent project is that there was no opportunity in town for people to move in and have a decent new apartment. Literally none. I think our project doubled the, uh, the downtown available apartments. And the only ones that were new were only new because the House of Pizza caught on fire a while back and it needed to be rebuilt. Other than that, all of the apartments that available were just old, old places. So the people that now are moving in, actually, you know, their children happen to go to school there and so it allows them to sort of have a closer family unit. So they do have, we, there are some kids that visit there, might stay, but it hasn't, it doesn't have the burden on the school system that, that some houses may. Oh, uh, nursing home and uh, it closed, so age friendly. Um, I, maybe I address that. I think that um, the, the, what, whatever we do, build will be fully accessible for any age group to be there. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense. We don't know yet if it makes sense to have it 55 plus, 65 plus. Um, I really, in general, we, we do have a 55 plus property that uh, Cindy and I renovated an old school in Gorham, and that made sense for that, for that property. Um, in general, I don't know that it makes sense in a village setting. I think it makes sense to have a cross-section in the village setting, but we're definitely open to listening to that. Um, how we build it will not change a whole lot because it will need to be ADA accessible, and so how we program the space can be talked about down the line. Okay, so not exclusive, uh, Alex said, so yeah, not exclusive and self-centered, if you will, in, on the Pine Canyon site. Um, we definitely will contemplate that. 
you know, obviously there's a lot more going on in the borough than just this site. It happens to be a, a sizable portion in the middle of the village, but we definitely will contemplate um, how it fits in with the greater village. Sure, yeah, yeah. We can't hear you. How many stories? Um, so the question was, how many stories are we allowed to go up? Um, we had a discussion about a height limit early on with uh, with James. And is it is it four? Is that what it is? Yeah, I don't know how many feet we're allowed. It's four stories. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Four. Oh, so yeah, a follow up to that to keep in mind uh, the Summersworth community and, and when it comes to uh, not being exclusive, not, not having overlaps. Um, so, oh, and the next point, uh, an interesting one transparency, communication is key. Um, Ken Bell Main Street is as uh, an example for the open air structure there. So, transparency. Um, Really, that's what tonight is about, is listening. We really, you know, our goal is to put together a project that, uh, you know, I'm pretty conservative by nature, so I'll never say we'll put together a project that everybody will love. We'll put together a project that most people will really enjoy and, and, and should be a great project. The way we're going to do that is to listen tonight, listen December 5th, listen in between anybody that brings comments, <coughs> excuse me, brings comments forward. And then uh, we'll work, we'll get busy working on our, our first crack at it. And then we will reconvene with what we've come up with to poke holes in it, to look at it, and see what people think. And at that point, you know, again, I, I won't guarantee that we'll be able to appease everybody, but I think that our goal is to really come up with a project that, that um, most people like and makes, makes the most sense. So that's what we'll be doing. So on the transparency front, we'll be doing everything we can. Uh, we've left uh, notes on the chairs tonight with Julie's contact information. So anytime we welcome questions, comments, phone calls are, you know, we, we're pretty easy to find. So we definitely welcome those, those questions. Italian bakery, Cindy would love that too. Um, <laughs> hopefully we'll, we can find some of the food. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, next question is about restaurants or comment. Uh, great comment. I think that's a really important part of any vibrant downtown. Um, so, uh, Kevin, you brought up something about Maine and Company and larger employers. I need to hear more about Maine and Company because I don't, I'm not familiar with that. If you can find me afterwards, let me know or I'll, I'll Google it later tonight, I'm sure. But um, if you can let me know, that would be great. Uh, let's see, several years ago with local for Jeremy. I don't I guess I didn't get the whole question on that. Um, was that about local businesses? Jeremy? I was just saying we were glad that, that you were oh. you know, the best part away and that you have to invest in the state and oh. have a personal stage you can see. Okay. That's right, thank you. All right, thanks. <laughs> I didn't finish right, sorry. So um, then 42 years ago, more businesses in town and um, the post office was in town. Now nothing needs vibrant downtown. Um, so that's our goal, absolutely our goal. I don't. I mean, if we don't create something like that, it will not succeed. If it doesn't succeed, we all have problems really. So our goal is that uh, we have a history of, of doing that on a, you know, on, on a, on a, scale, a certain scale. And, um, and we enjoy it, and we think that we can really do a good job at it, but not alone. This isn't something we can do a good job at alone. We need input, and we really appreciate the input that we're getting tonight. So, uh, let's see, timeline. Um, so, we're getting busy. Uh, we've got an RFP going out for engineering services tomorrow. It should be published tomorrow. So that's for civil engineering services. That's really the, um, the 
first thing we need to get busy on on the site to understand um, where those current buildings fit and see if we design around those or not. So that's happening very soon. Um, these processes do take time, but we are motivated to move things forward. Um, so there will not be equipment tomorrow unless I happen to get out here by post hole. They're going to put Sydney's suggestion box out. But um, that's the only equipment that will be there uh, soon. Um, I, I do think that, um, you know, from a timeline perspective, again, we're going to get we're going to get busy. And I, I if it seems like nothing's going on and you really feel that way, I'd I really encourage you to pick up the phone and call and say, John, what's going on here? Actually, say, Cindy, what's going on here? <laughs> um, so, uh, but that, you know, because we will be busy working on things. Um, and, uh, but it just, it does take time. And I know, I know, no one wants to hear that because you guys have been hearing that or dealing with that for quite a few years. Yes. Wouldn't it be better to just tear down the, the, the buildings that are already there and start fresh? So it may be. Uh, I'm really not sure just yet. I think, uh, you know, our, our thoughts so far have been up at the top of the funnel. And I think as we we have our, we need to get our, get the survey done and look at our engineering and understand what's there and whether it has any, any purpose or not. Structurally, we know they're adequate. Um, and, you know, that's going to certainly, that, that plays a big role in what happens. So I think, uh, you know, in a perfect world, uh, it's always, I think it's always best to have a complete blank slate. I think it'll be, it'll definitely be something we have to look at and understand. There's obviously a pretty big cost to finishing the, the demolition on that. And um, so we'll, we'll be looking at that for sure. Next question, yes. Okay. How will us as town people be notified when you decide what you're going to do with the property? So, um, you know, one of the things that we'll need to do, uh, you know, there'll be an official and a formal process. We'll need to go through the planning board with our plans. We need to get all that approved. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but our goal, you know, will not be to uh, spring a design on the town at a planning board meeting. Um, we will just. We'll, we'll be putting together uh, a format, probably similar to this, to roll out what we have in mind. Because, because you know, go, doing it in a, in a format, like a planning board meeting, I don't think is the best format to really poke holes in and hash things through and give us an opportunity to really make the changes. So ideally, you know, we'll be at the planning board meeting and most of the discussion will have happened. There certainly will be more, and there'll be public hearings around that, I'm sure. Um, but before the public process begins, the official formal, you know, um, subdivision process and all that, before that happens, we will reconvene some meetings to be able to look at what, because, you know, we don't, it doesn't behoove us to put together a plan that nobody likes and have to defend that at a plan board meeting. It's not really what we want to do. It's a waste of our time and your time, and no one wants to have to defend it that way. So the time to do it is ahead of time, look at it, come up with your comments, and, and we can talk. As I said, I, I won't promise that we can, you know, I'll promise we're going to listen to the comments and, and, um, and, and do what seems to make sense. So the other questions were, um, so the, the timeline, back to that, um, I wish, we all wish we could twitch our nose and make it happen. I do see it playing out over a period of years. However, there's been some early excitement from, uh, you know, from businesses that want to locate down here. So, I, I, if there's a lot of excitement, that really could accelerate the process. Um, there's a couple of things that we want to talk about. I, I don't know, I'll, I'll bring them up because Cindy's not up here right now. But, Cindy's idea really is, you know, she would love to see if we're talking about a downtown in a village setting, um, post office and a library in that area. Now, obviously, you already have a post office, you already have a library. We don't know if that's possible or if that's a crazy comment or not. But when you think about it, having, you know, a concentrated downtown area, it's a great idea to do it. So that's one of the things we'll want to talk about and process and see if it makes sense. Um, and those things take time. What's that? 
talking about shit. Right, yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll definitely need to incorporate that. Excellent. The renewable energy, uh, renewable energy piece, um, I, I don't know how much of that we'll see on this site. It really, what, it, it just is a matter of does it make sense or not. Um, and I think that uh, in our experience, we've built and developed a lot. Um, a lot of that doesn't make sense unless it's subsidized. I don't know what the kind of subsidies are around that. So, we, if it makes sense, then we'll definitely be looking at it. Um, we've, in the, the um, property that we just built, does have some great southern exposure. We do not have solar panels on there, but we have the ability to install them down the line, should it make sense. Um, and then, uh, river water, geothermal, interesting comment. I think we've, we've got to flush that out and I've got a, got a note on it and we'll definitely give that some thought to see if it's anything that makes sense. Using local contractors, um, so we, you know, we are a general contracting company and so we do, we self-perform some things and then we hire subcontractors for some things. So we absolutely will be um, working with local contractors um, and um, as well as, I mean, I, you know, we really are pretty close, you know, we're, I mean, if you, if you put it in the map, it's 35 miles away. Now, I, I honestly don't know if sure if that's where the crow flies or, or what, but it's really not that far from Gorham. So, we're, um, we consider ourselves local, but we definitely, if people are interested in um, being involved in the construction efforts on the project, we absolutely want to hear from you. We have a, a pretty good process at Great Falls to work with local, you know, to work with contractors, excuse me, subcontractors, whatever. And um, the, you know, the, the goal would be to meet with them soon, get them set up, get them approved, and um, so that we can work together on the project. That would be great. Um, and so I guess that really was just a comment, the last one, and then. Uh, I would just like to piggyback uh, on the local contractors. What you know, what's going to make this work is um, is businesses on the site, businesses that are interested in either relocating there or opening a new shop there. And so, anyone that has the information or any interest in that, I'd encourage you to reach out as soon as possible because our goal, and we've been, we've already been working. Julie's got a list of of um, businesses. And you know, and been thinking about different things, and we really want to make sure that we capture all the information that we can as we, because as we design the project, it'll be really important to know who has strong interest in being there. That'll help with the design. Some businesses, uh, you know, may need a drive-through, may need different. So we got to we have to contemplate all of that early on and figure that out. So I'd encourage you to pass that information along as soon as possible. So it's, it's not too soon to do that. Any, uh, anything else? We've got about uh, 10 minutes left for additional questions or comments. If maybe John said something that got you thinking or you want to pose. I have no idea what you're planning, but one thing you want to take into consideration Downtown Burr has a parking problem. So whatever you put there, you've got to make sure there's parking for people or it won't go in anywhere. And I've been in this town for many, many years. In fact, I was born here and I'm still here, so it's been a while. So I've seen what the businesses we used to have, even back into the 40s, late 30s and 40s, and all up through and, and why they left. And once you get the supermarket, that's when our four grocery stores one by one, and out of business. So there's a lot of competition here with New Hampshire, and I think that has to be taken into consideration also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How about we? So uh, we, if we do, depending on what we build, um, if more than likely there will be opportunities for that. Um, we, that's, you know, in our current project, 
we've engineered for that. We've not only engineered for that, we've engineered for a lab. I couldn't hear what the that is. Oh, I'm sorry. She had asked about rooftop gardens. Okay. If there would be rooftop gardens. Thank you. So I think we definitely will contemplate all of that. Not necessarily, we will definitely engineer for it. I think, as I said in our current project, it's been, we engineered for that. We engineered for a lap pool on the roof. We engineered for hot tubs on outdoor decks. None of that has occurred, but it's all engineered so that if, you know, as people live there, if they want to do that, the engineering has already occurred. So we'll definitely keep things like that in mind. Well, I just wanted to bring up the, mention the parking situation. Now, I don't live downtown. I live six miles out. And having to come downtown and circle downtown six times to find a spot, you know I'm not going to be shopping downtown. And the older I get, the less distance my legs want to move. So convenient parking for me and other seniors is a thought. I want to make sure it incorporated into the planning stage. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? I just really want to thank you for investing your own capital and taking the risk in us. And this is a great community. And I hope that anything that you need from me, I'm happy to work with you. And let's make this a success. Thank you. Thank you. I just had a question about, you had mentioned about attracting businesses and whether or not um, there's any restrictions on chains and how many, some of the towns that I go through, there's, you know, there's a McDonald's and a Burger King and a, you know, Taco Bell and it's like four different kinds of coffee places, you know, that are chains and I was just wondering if that was something, when you're talking about attracting businesses, if that's going to be something that's a part of the project. Good question. Um, I think, you know, they, they certainly have their place. Um, and I, I think that, uh, again, we haven't got into the weeds on the design, but in general, um, you know, we, I, I think that uh, what we've, you know, what we've heard from and the people that we've talked to and reached out to are more local uh, options, more local offerings, you know. And I think that that's, if you look at a, a to design a village, um, you know, in the, in the typical sense of the word that we think of a village, it's, it's sometimes it's tough to meet those brand standards of like national franchises. So it's just sometimes it's, it's a little bit kind of like oil and water to try and make those fit. Um, so I, I think in general, you know, because of that, uh, I would think that it'd be more local offerings that would go in there. So. Again, I, you know, I hate you probably, I, you don't know me at all, but I, I, I'm not going to promise anything. But in general, that's just not um, what we typically would think of in a village setting. And, and the partial is big, but it's not that big. Because, you know, the national brand standards generally need a fair amount of real estate um, for what they, what they require. Uh, and, and they also, you know, require a certain demographic and all that. And I, I just don't know um, that that, uh, that would make sense. Julie, did you have another handle back there? No, I think. So, did I miss anything, Angela? Right over here. Do you have a website or a Facebook page that shows your current project? Yes, we do. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so we have a Facebook and Instagram and uh, and also a website. So uh, on the sheet I gave you, um, I put check out our Facebook. Um, we, we put a lot of updates on the Facebook, so definitely check that out. Um, and we're, we're pretty diligent about updating it. So and all of our projects, uh, not all, most of our projects are on our website. Um, recent projects are on our website. So you can definitely check them out there. It's greatfallsinc.com. So G R E A T F A L L S I N C dot com.
think the uh, original interest in the Indonesian Railroad Committee uh, had a lot of youthful import, input, and they were especially interested in keeping it green, uh, which may not be feasible, but being pedestrian friendly. Uh, and in that respect, I think you will find it beneficial to work in tandem with the town and the State Department of Transportation to make sure you get the traffic flow right for this development. Excellent, thank you. Anyone else? Just got a couple minutes left. While you're while you're contemplating your last while you're contemplating your last question or comment, um, there is another listening session on December sixth. Um, that's going to be a morning session. Fifth. 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 I'm sorry. Today's the sixth. Um, that's going to be a morning session. I think we're still working on the location for that. Um, there are cards. You can write down your questions and comments and leave them with us. Put them in the suggestion box. And um, John, when are you going to dig that hole to put the suggestion box up across the street? Well, soon. It, it, it's on. It's on my list of things to do. So I, I think it will. It will be soon. But I say within a week or so, just to just to be sure. City so wanted me to dig it tonight after the meeting, you know. But I think it's going to be be soon. A little, a little chilly for that. But but that will be up there 24/7 for you to um, to to, um, to drop your questions or your comments as well as um, Julie's contact information at Great Falls, um, the website, the Facebook page, and I think the town Facebook page is going to also be another source for information too. So um, Great Falls and the Smith family is really um, you know, trying to go the, the full, give the full effort um, to keep the lines of communication open from you and hear from you to so you know that that's how this project is going to be successful for everybody. Yeah, John, go ahead. Cindy and Joe and I will be here after the meeting tonight if anyone has any questions until they shut the lights off. So um, that's another opportunity if you didn't get a chance to ask questions. Anything else about anyone? Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Everybody.